Good morning. Today is Tuesday, April 25th, 2023. My name is Dr. Deborah Van Hook of Oakland, California, here, and I will be your moderator for this class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers in Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and a divine revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, and we're happy to, and grateful to have our students studying with us from the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host of our class today is Dr. Marie Winters of Arkport, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title of Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title of God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a type just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit. <clears throat> and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body 
and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being de deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or the children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men, whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth we'll open this morning's class off with an opening prayer given by dr dennis pratt if he's available we will have a musical selection from dr jacqueline mccain our scripture reading is romans fifth chapter and that will be read by dr marie winters and we will continue with our uh, class this morning in Romans, the fifth chapter. And may we have our prayer now. Good day, family. Let's bow our hearts and minds in the moment of prayer, thanking our Heavenly Father for assembling us today and keeping us mindful of his ever presence. We thank him for each moment he gives us to increase in a knowledge and understanding of his purpose and to witness to it unto others so that we hope that no one is lost when the universal revelation is revealed. With all these blessings and many more, we thank Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good morning, class. There are some things 
amen i know there are some places i i can't go but i am sure of this one thing that yahweh is real for i can feel him deep within yes yashua is real he's real in my soul yashua is real for he has washed and made me whole his love for me just like pure gold yes joshua is real for i can feel him in my soul some folks may doubt some folks may scorn all can desert and leave me all alone but as for me i'll take yah's part for yahweh is real for i can feel him in my heart i cannot tell just how you felt when Yahshua took took your sins all away but since that day yes since that I Yahshua has been real for I can feel his holy power. Yes, Yeshua is real. He's real in my soul. Yeshua is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me just like pure gold for yashua is real for i can feel him in my soul hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> okay the scripture reading is romans the fifth chapter therefore being justified by faith we have peace with Yahweh through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Yahweh. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of Yahweh is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time the Messiah died for the unholy. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But Yahweh commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, the Messiah died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahweh by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in Yahweh through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, 
and so death passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Yahweh and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahshua the Messiah, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. It was Romans 5th chapter. Hallelujah. Our readers are Dr. Jacqueline McCain and Dr. Marie Winters. We're still looking for readers. And we will continue with our lecture today of renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty. May I turn this class over now to Dr. Frank Lewis. That the reader is Lucy Altman. Excuse me. <laughs> the reader this morning will be Dr. Jacqueline McCain and Dr. Lucy Altman. Thank you. Dr. Frank. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, we just read Romans, the fifth chapter, which, uh, boy, that thing is great from beginning to end, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it and is. so uh, usually what we uh, do um, is uh, allow people to, uh, if they have something to share from uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, and and try to show it, of course, you know, I mean, it's pretty, it's self-explanatory, but it still can be pointed out some main points. So if anybody would like to uh, talk about some of the things in Romans, the fifth chapter, this is your opportunity, please. Hi, I just have one thing that I'd like to share, which is uh, back earlier up in the chapter, how that, well, we were yet sinners that the Messiah died for us. Six verse. Yeah. But when we were without strength in due times, Messiah died for the unrighteous. I'll read down to the eighth verse. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But Yahweh commanded his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, the Messiah died for us. That's just Much the great love that he has for, for us. That's that mm -hmm. final progenitiveness, the great love that he has for his offspring, that while we were ignorant of him, while we were sinners, he shed his blood and made that atonement for us. Yes. And without that, you know, we're without a hope. So um, we have just great, great love manifested and just a wonderful thing. Uh, Joan uh, 3 and 16 down through 18. John three sixteen, For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. Because he be did not believe in the name. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the world wants to tell us that, oh, a name doesn't matter. He knows who you're praying to. He knows who you're talking about or to and all this type of nonsense. But uh, they don't appreciate the fact that knowing his name is such a great gift, uh, really. It, it's a great treasure to understand his name, Yahweh, the breath of life, the giver, the sustainer of all life, and to know that he is Eya Asha Eya. He is, it's his substance. Everything is his substance materialized. It's in him we live, move, and have our being. And to have this great gift of knowing him, knowing his name, knowing what he's accomplished for us, having all of that proof through the law and the prophets, and seeing him operating in us on a daily basis, uh, uh, no matter what the world thinks, we are gifted above all men on this earth. And it's just a beautiful thing. And only by grace, not anything that we deserved or earned. So. That, that was all I wanted to share. Thank you very much. Praise Yeah, that was nice. But there's, um, if you want to go to Jeremiah, the next chapter. Which chapter? 9, 24. Jeremiah 9 and 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he mm -hmm. understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Yahweh, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith Yahweh. I think it kind of went along with what you were saying there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I, I could talk about this chapter, <laughs> but... Uh, if there's anybody else who don't normally talk, this is one jam-packed that just about anybody could say something about this chapter. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Avoid uh, the holiday rush. Now, I, I wanted to go with, um, you know, where Adam send and brought the death upon all men. So if you go to, um, now that was back in the garden when he ate the fruit of that tree, he died in his conscience. And that will go to, go to Romans eight and six. Romans eight and six. <clears throat> For to be carnally minded is death. See, but being, to be being carnal minded, that's what happened to Adam there, is death. That's why he says death passed upon all men. Because when Adam ate that, we were all carnal minded. Okay, go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay. Because the mm -hmm. Keep, keep on going. I think down to eight, eight or nine. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Okay, see, 
So the, th the thing is, to be carnally minded is death. The carnal mind is enmity with Yahweh. And enmity means there's like hatred and, and malice. And, and it's totally opposing what Lucy was talking about. Yahweh is love. So, and it says it cannot be subject to the law of Yahweh. The carnal mind can't be. And the spiritual law is actually love. If you go to 1 John 4, chapter, I think, 7, it explains that Yahweh is love. So any, the carnal mind being enmity against Yahweh, it can't be subject to that law, which is love. <laughs> 1 John 4 and 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Yahweh, and everyone that loveth is born of Yahweh, and knoweth Yahweh. He that loveth not, knoweth not Yahweh, for Yahweh is love. See, so that's the key point. So to be carnally minded, you're not going to be capable of possessing the love of Yahweh. Now, we have manifestations of love in the world. And one of the greatest lo um, love that is in the physical world is a parent towards a child. They'll die for their child. And, you know, earlier in the chapter, it was talking about, uh, you know, giving up the life for a righteous man. Well, he died for all while we were yet sinners. You know, that, that mother who's going to die for her children won't die for all. See, so it's only a manifestation, a very great one, but it's still not Yahweh's love. So um, now when you're carnal minded, you're going to be enmity towards that spirit law or the love that the Messiah is. Without that love, you're not born of Yahweh. You got to have that law of his love within us. And that's the spirit of Yahshua. Okay, so go, go to uh, Ecclesiastics, the third chapter, verse 11. Now see, he, he's got a plan. He's got this, um, the end declared from the beginning. Now, Adam was pointing to uh, Yahshua in the fact that he willingly died for his bride because it was Eve who ate the fruit. And it was said, that you will surely die when you eat that fruit. So he willingly took it from Eve and died for her because she was going to be saved in childbearing and stuff, stuff. And so he had to be with her in that death. Okay, Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that Elohim maketh from the beginning to the end. See, they can't find out the work from beginning to because he set the world in their heart. And at the point in time he set the world in their heart is when they became carnal minded, fleshly minded, worldly minded. So he set the world in their heart and nobody throughout that period of time was going to be capable of knowing what he had from beginning to end. And I want to go to Colossians 126, I hope. See, so there was a change. See, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned according to the similitude of Adam's transgression. And that was disobeying a direct law. That's what Adam did. So even though folks didn't have a law to disobey this direct law, that death reigned still because they were currently minded. Okay, the Colossians. Colossians 1, 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the hope of glory? 
See, so that, that's it. The mystery that is being revealed to us now, our only hope of glory is that spirit in us. That's where it says, and Adam all die, and Yahshua, many shall be made alive again. See, so the mystery, when Yahshua comes in, is being made manifest of what he had planned from beginning to end. Okay, and see, now the law... He says, where there's no um, law, sin is not imputed where there is no law. So he bring the law in to actually show them what was in their heart. It, it didn't mean that they could still be uh, saved by the law because there is no flesh justified by the law. And, and that, that's plain. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us onto the Messiah. Well, it was their schoolmaster to bring them onto the Messiah. And then you got another scripture that says the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. So in a sense, it's our schoolmaster also, not just the Jews. But go to Galatians uh, 3 and 17. Galatians 3.17, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh in Yahshua, the law, which was 430 years after, could not disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. See, so the promise came first. The promise that was given to Abraham that in his seed would all nations of the earth be blessed. And that blessing, it says not unto seeds. Is that real close to there? Um, like the that was 16. Oh, okay. So I missed Six, 16. Then you, sh you should read. 16th verse of the third chapter of Galatians. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is the Messiah. See, so when he gave the promise to Abraham, which was before the, the law given on Mount Sinai, from Mount Sinai, was given, Abraham was given a promise. <laughs> and that law, if righteousness came by the law, it would annul the promise given to Abraham. Now, there was a promise that all seed would be blessed in his seed, which is Yahshua the Messiah. And it's the same thing, right from Adam, when all died, the blessing is going to come later on when Yahshua comes in. And the law was just a schoolmaster to show them, in a sense, why they needed a savior. Um, because what Yahweh wanted from the beginning, I think it's in Deuteronomy 10, 12 or 12, 10, where it says, oh, if there was such a heart in them that they would keep my commandments. And, um, so it, it was showing what was wrong with them. And see, that's when man died in his conscience, he got the world set in his heart. That's where the flaw was, was in their heart. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now Israel, what does Yahweh thy Elohim require of thee, but to fear Yahweh thy Elohim, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thine soul. Now, if you got the world in your heart, you can't love Yahweh, who is spirit, with all your soul and, and your, your heart. Okay, so he wanted to, um, and I think it's Deuteronomy 8.3 that starts talking about um, to see what was in their heart. Deuteronomy 8, 3, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee known that man doth not live by bread only, 
but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh doth man live. I think I missed it again. I think it's I missed... a two. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I'm missing it by one of it. Oh, I didn't read up the high enough. Eight and two. And thou shalt re... That's what I just... No, you read three. And thou... Okay. Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> just read two again, because I missed it, even if you did read it. I didn't. And thou shalt remember all the way which Yahweh thy Elohim led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. See, so he's testing what's in the heart. That, that's where their flaw was, was in the heart. So when he bring the law in, it revealed how they could not follow Yahweh's ways. They, they were so contrary to him. And it was a carnal law given the carnal people, but it did reflect the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh's law, because it, uh, it, it was a shadow of heavenly things, all of the, the law. Because, I mean, it's like if you love somebody, you're not going to bear false witness against your neighbor if you love them. So it, it reflected the law of Yahweh. But see, by the righteousness of the law, the works and all of that, they were never supposed to be saved because it, it came in as a schoolmaster. And did we end up reading, um, um, go back to the Galatians and uh, read 319. Dr. Marie, may I add uh, Deuteronomy 5, 28 and 29? I think that's speaking right to what you were talking about in the heart. Sure. Deuteronomy 5 and 28. And Yahweh heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me. And Yahweh said unto me, <clears throat> I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee, they have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they should fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Right, and that never happened because none was able to ever keep the law. There's, um, you go to Romans 3, somewhere it says there's none righteous no not one and even you go back and i think we talked about it a little bit yesterday go back to the 14th chapter of psalms where it says there was none that seeketh yahweh there is none righteous no not one so all right go back to galatians 319 galatians 319 uh -huh. wherefore then serveth the law it was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. See, it was added because of transgression. That transgression from Anna where everybody became dead with the carnal mind. As long as you're carnal minded, um, um, transgression or sin is transgression of the law. So the carnal mind being enmity with Yahweh, it cannot be subject to the law of Yahweh, which is not that Mo Mosaic law back there. He's talking about the law of the spirit or the law of life. The carnal mind cannot be subject to the spiritual law. That's where there'll always be transgressors of Yahweh's law. It was added because of that transgression, the inability to be uh, um, able to be subject to Yahweh's law. Okay, uh, keep on going. You, you know, I know I'm supposed to be host, but I, I'm looking at a variety of notes and stuff, so I um, <laughs> can't really do both at once. Uh, all right, so, so now you got um, 
Uh, just keep on going. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to have um, somebody's going to keep going there, but somebody else get Hebrews 9, 10. But keep going in Galatians. Galatians 3 and 20. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is one. Is the law then against the promises of Yahweh? By no means. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Yahshua the Messiah might be given to them that believe. See, so it's it, that law was added. It ended up concluding all under sin. See, that the promise by faith, which was going to be by Yahshua the Messiah, See, so it proved that nobody in that state was going to ever be capable of being saved in that state. You had to look to Yahshua the Messiah for it. Okay, and keep, keep on going. We'll just go down to a little bit further. Uh, verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Messiah, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Yes, yeah, that faith has come. Now, actually, faith is Yahshua. They did describe the definition of faith in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. It says it's the substance of things hoped for. That's the Holy Spirit we're hoping for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Yahshua came down in the flesh to declare his father, which is spirit. Mm -hmm. See, so, so he is actually faith. And that schoolmaster was supposed to point us to that faith or point us to Yahshua. Okay, did you read 25? Verse 25, uh, Galatians 3.25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. The after faith has <laughs> come and taken the old covenant out of the way to bring in the new covenant, which is capable of changing your heart and mind from a car being carnally minded to being spiritually minded, then you're no longer under the schoolmaster. Now that's where I need Hebrews uh, 9.10. Hebrews 9 and 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. See, it was imposed on them till. See, so it shows right there in that scripture that it was never meant to be permanent that we would be saved by doing those cardinal laws and ordinances. It was imposed on them till the time of reformation, which can only transpire with the Holy Spirit in you. He's the only one that could reform that heart from being currently minded to being spiritually minded. Yeah. Okay. I, Jeez, this could go in so many different directions. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, uh, and then I, I think it was yesterday's um, thing where it says it was not only imputed onto Abraham, but it was also imputed onto to us that it would be our righteousness. How does that go? You're in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Oh, no, I, 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 um, I just quoted that for um, the, well, you could read 11 1 while I'm searching for this, I guess. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Okay, so it's the evidences of things not seen. And, um, Oh, geez, I was going to say something. I lost it. So never mind. <laughs> okay. Now, um, 
cometh this blessing then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So his, his faith or his belief was reckoned unto him for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? We were, okay. Um, I think it was imputed though. Okay. Blessed is the man whom Yahweh will not impute sins. Does anybody know that exact one where it says it's not to Abraham only, but also to us? It is imputed. Oh, okay, here it is. I think I found it. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, they're talking to Abraham and his belief in Yahweh. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom? It shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Yahshua and Messiah from the dead. See, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. See, all of our offenses stemmed from the heart we possessed, which was carnal. And um, so we got to believe like Lucy was talking about. He sent his son so that we would believe in him. So, um, you know, I, I can slip up or whatever. So if anybody found a slip up in anything I said, I always have no problem of being corrected or if anybody's got any question on what I said, but I think I'll stop there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Winters. And Dr. Altman. Uh, does anyone else have anything to uh, bring out and share? Okay, I think we ought to get the charts at least to uh, talk about this. You can see the scripture lessons on it. <clears throat> um, the dispensation of ages, um, this whole chap the chapter five 12 through 19 is in the uh, antediluvian age there. If you see how that, uh, if you see how he's going now, you know what they, they call that the New Testament in Romans, you know, and he's going clear back there to Adam, isn't he? <clears throat> and you see how when you go to the antediluvian age at the top, it has age of conscience. <clears throat> And he used to ask him, what kind of conscience? And he'd say, condemn. And that was in the scripture lesson. Then you have Genesis 3, and it says, and Adam all died, and it has Genesis 3 and 6. Now, you see how it has Romans 5, 12 through 21? So you can see how important <laughs> that Romans, the fifth chapter, is. It's mm -hmm. showing how that uh, it says, wherefore is by one man sin entered in the world and death by sin. And she was covering what that death was. Uh, he, be, he was, they were really naked and not ashamed, spiritually minded. And then when they transgressed the law, that's how, uh, he became carnal mind. That's how he died in his conscience or soul. And as it says, by one man, many were made sinners by one man, you know, uh, Yash, well, you ought. I mean, I don't know if you want to read all that, but it's really good reading as we've had in the scripture lesson. And another thing that's important there's so many great things in that chapter, but five and nine will tell you what you're saved from. See, people Robert, will, uh, yeah, read that. <clears throat> from the five and nine, much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. See, that's what you're saved from. See, he saved you from your sins uh, 1900 and some years ago by dying for the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to come to that knowledge and understanding. That's where the God preaching of the gospel comes in. And, uh, but you're saved from his wrath because he's got mm -hmm. great anger and wrath. He made this whole world so that you could learn about him and uh and uh, a lot of these events that we see in the world where there's a lot of things going on and death and destruction it's showing it's a type of his wrath and uh 
And that's what the lake of fire is, the wrath. And so uh, your soul can be saved through Yahshua the Messiah. And that saves us from the wrath of Yahweh. That's also in 1 Timothy uh, 1 and is it 9 or 10? 1 Thessalonians, I'm sorry. 1 Thessalonians, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 1 and 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. Or five, one and yeah, I think it's one and ten, maybe. First Thessalonians, uh, one and ten, um, started nine to get the thought. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to Yahweh from idols to serve the living and true Elohim. Yeah, and that's all you had before you come into school was them idols. Uh, no, it's on. It's the first chapter where she was reading. Read on. Uh, Next book. First Thessalonians Tempers. one nine and ten, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Yahshua, who delivered us from the wrath to come. Now you mm -hmm. see what Yahshua Messiah does. He delivers us from the wrath that is to come. Uh, and that wrath to come is the lake of fire <laughs> or when he's going to burn this whole creation up so if you've had all your uh, trust and confidence in the physical mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be burned up along with your soul if you don't receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and that's by believing him as was already said uh, you have uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9 also First Thessalonians 5 and 9. For Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. So you see, uh, he doesn't, he hasn't appointed uh, us to wrath, but to obtain salvation uh, by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. <clears throat> and so... Uh, and, and so you have those things in the Bible, seeing the wrath of Yahweh, like the Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood and, and uh, all kind of things. And, uh, and but it's uh, through Yahshua the Messiah, you're going to be saved from the wrath of Yahweh and receive eternal life. And there ain't nothing more important than that, is it? That's right. And, uh, and that's what this whole chapter is talking about, more or less. Uh, that you're getting eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. So you see in that chart there, well, we had it earlier. You saw that he had that whole Romans 5, 12 through um, uh, 21. Now, um, I'll say this real quick, too. Um, see, well, um, there's been a lot of people didn't ever get the story of Adam right, even in the teaching. <clears throat> you know, some people want to make Adam the creator. He didn't make himself. You understand? He's a very good type of Yahshua Messiah. And that's what the 14th verse says that Adam was a figure of him that was to come. Is a figure the same one? No. No, a figure's a type. See? And so, uh, uh, and so Adam did die in his conscience or soul. <clears throat> but he can be saved through Yahshua Messiah. Now the next verse there, there's 1 Corinthians 15, 22, which is an Adam all died and Yahshua Messiah shall all be made alive. All that <laughs> believe him, you understand? Uh, uh, so, um, and you see how he's given this, uh, he gives that promise. You see the anti Antiluian age is like the court roundabout of the pattern. And it's the second age. And in the second step of the pattern, the altar, which is death. Yes. So you see where you have a death coming in. And then the, uh, the third step of the patterns, the labor with water. And you have the flood. And then it opens up this third age. But also the third age in the ages of time is representing uh, the holy place. So you see the holy place. He gives the promise there in the third dispensation and then so, give them the law <laughs> but as she had read the prom the law does not disannul the promise that it makes mm -hmm. it of none effect then after yashmasai's death burial resurrection and ascension 
and he pours out the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, that uh, is the most holy place according to the pattern. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> because he pours out the Holy Spirit in man's heart and mouth. See, the same place that man died at, now Yahshua Messiah is giving him life. And that's what it said there in Romans. We'll just read 5 and 19 just to uh, uh, kind of finish it up there. Romans 5. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now, see, that's how you're being made righteous is through Yahshua. So the disobedience was Adam, but the obedience is Yahshua. Read on. Uh, that as, excuse me. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. So you see him the one given eternal life? Now he's the... Yahweh is the one that gave us physical life, but when if you be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit, you can receive eternal life. And in John 17 and 3, that's what it says. Uh, and this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. So when he poured out the Holy Spirit, that's when man was able to know something. And she had that read earlier about Colossians. And, that, and when you read Colossians 1.26 and you're looking at this chart, it says even the mystery which is hid from ages and generations. Well, what ages? <laughs> them, to them first two ages in time. Mm -hmm. It's been hid ever since the creation of the world. It says, but now, that's the age that we live in now, but now is made manifest uh, to his sons. And, and, and which is the mystery among the Gentiles, the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Yahshua Messiah in you. And that's your only hope of glory. And how's he get in you? You have to believe the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. You have to believe him. As a matter of fact, that's what we was last reading, wasn't it? On page 21. <laughs> we read it about three or four times last time <laughs> in that yeah. transcript, which is, uh, um, he talks about believing. And uh, yeah, people ask him, uh, this was on page 21 there. Um, of what wants me to do to be saved, believe on Yeah, God. yeah. Now this is, this is uh, renounced uh, hidden things of dishonesty, the right. administration of death, Hebrews 6 chapter, Romans 11 chapter by H.C. Uh, Kinley. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, uh, 1969. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I think he did say that. Uh, what did he say? Somebody says, well, what must I do to be saved? Believe on Yahshua the Messiah, just like I told you. Believe that you are circumcised by his circumcision. Mm -hmm. Believe in his, uh, through his baptism. Believe in his death burial and resurrection believe in it believe that he is the redeemer believe that yahweh gave him to restore and to redeem the world back and it ain't enough devils in hell to keep you from being saved anybody now is that clear yeah <laughs> <laughs> And they ain't no different. Now, that's, there's other lectures where he talks about when you go to Acts 16, 30, and 31. Because uh, that's another thing that, I mean, they said, well, what must I do to be saved? <clears throat> well. Uh, Acts 16 and 30? Yeah, 16 and 30. This and is brought the out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on Yahshua the Messiah, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So you see how uh, you're saved? Believe in Yahshua the Messiah. 
in thy house. And, and that's what this school does. It gives you proof and witnesses so that you can believe. You know, but if you look right within the word believe, you know, you have uh, what the devil did. He'd be lying to Eve. <laughs> you understand? And so there's a lot of people believing, you understand, but they're believing a lie. But when you come to the, the divine vision revelation that's been taught by the Holy Spirit, uh, he's just laying the truth down to you. And, uh, and so we're, uh, I mean, just like he told them in John 8, 32, which, which is also in the fifth aim, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, that, and that gospel, I mean, just believing him, uh, that's salvation. You might as well get that John 6, 28 and 29 there too, just because they asked him when he was walking around about it there. John 6 and 28, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of Elohim? Now he don't give them 613 works <laughs> of the law, you understand? And they gonna ask him. Then they said to him, well, what shall we do that we might work the works of Yahweh? Read. Yahshua answered and said unto them, this is the work of Yahweh, that you believe on him whom he has sent. Now that's the work, that you believe on him whom he has sent. That's the work of Yahweh. And I mean, you want to do his, his work? You believe Yahshua the Messiah. That's it. Uh, he said he came to fulfill. So he fulfilled it, uh, just like we just read there about you were circumcised with his circumcision. See, that's what we always read in Colossians two and uh, ten, and come to, and all this is the same thing she had uh, earlier. She was going into with about the heart and and uh, uh, you know, but your heart is your soul being influenced by demons. <laughs> That's why you're carnal minded. That's why he's, he's got you only looking at the physical. You mm. understand? In other words, you're looking at the creature instead of the creator. But this teaching has the power to convert the soul. And that's what changes your heart. Just like your heart's in the chest of your physical body. Well, your soul is the, is the, is, is, is is like an under the holy place of the by the pattern right. there and he's able to convert that mm -hmm. uh take that which is dead and buried and physical minded and carnal minded doing physical things and now you can worship him in spirit and in truth uh being converted by the holy spirit now you have the holy spirit residing in your soul leading and guiding you and it's because you believe the true gospel that's how you're sealed with the holy spirit Ephesians 1 13 said who also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation after you believed you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise so yeah you got to believe to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise not right. and not believe junk either you got to believe the true gospel see mm -hmm. okay so you got that uh we'll get the carnal ordinance chart and they can read that what we was reading earlier uh Colossians 2 and 10 yeah Colossians 2 and 10, and ye are complete in him, which is yeah. the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hand, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the Messiah. Now you see that when he died on the cross with a physical body. And was buried when he resurrected. He resurrected without a physical body. That was a circumcision of the flesh. You understand? No words. It ain't no more about the flesh. That's why those are dead works there. And you see right down there, nailed to the cross, it's got Colossians 2 and 10 there. And that's what he was taught. That's what he was taught. As a matter of fact, you got the Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. And this is what he's been doing in that transcript, ain't it? And she just had. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 10, if you look right over carnal ordinances, uh, that's where that scripture she was getting there. And he, it stood, the law stood only in meats, drinks, and diverse washings and carnal ordinance imposed on them until the time of reformation. See, he's talking on, on the, in the present kingdom age on the right side of the cross. And he's saying that those were imposed on them. 
<laughs> that means before the Messiah come and fulfilled him and took him out of the way. Uh, but until the time of reformation, until the time he changed it, and you don't have, the whole world does not teach that he come and fulfilled and nailed it all to his cross. But that's what we're reading there in Colossians. You were circumcision by the circumcision of the Messiah, by putting away the sins by the circumcision of Yahshua. Read on. And did, you, did we just read, you were circumcised by his circumcision? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, read on. Uh, verse 12, buried with him by baptism, wherein also you're risen with him through the faith of the operation of Yahweh, so you were buried with him in baptism. You know, that's one of the things that people like to say. I'm walking in Jesus' footsteps. Well, they are, are you older than 33? Because you should have been on that cross. You was on his footsteps. You was walking in his footsteps. You understand? Well, he done that for me. So I don't have to do it. Yeah, he was also circumcised for you and water baptized for you and ate the Lord's Supper and took that law uh -huh. out of the way, which was never given to you. You understand? Right. So that's why you have to believe on him whom he has sent. You have to believe what he said he did or else you when the devil, he doesn't trick everybody by doing saying, no, it's that's the New Testament when he was water baptized and all that kind of stuff. And you find out, no, he was under the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. See, we've mm -hmm. learned so many things, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Read on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Colossians 2.13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? Now, you see that he's talking, he's talking in Colossians and he's talking that he's bringing in the Gentiles. They were uncircumcised in the flesh. And he says what? He's now done what to him? Uh, 14, blotting out the handwriting. No, you read 13, where it's uncircumcised in the flesh. So you know and he's you talking being, to Gentiles there on this side of the cross. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? Yeah. And that's what is, and that's the same as uh, 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 Ephesians 2 and 1. It says, and you hath he quickened. See, what's that? What's that you? That's his soul. That's your soul. Kathy Quicken, who was once dead in trespasses and sins and walked according to the course of this world. All of us have got those memories, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was dead before we come down here. We didn't know the creator. Eternal life's to know. We didn't know it. Yahweh Elam through his son, Yahshua, and his eternal purpose through the dispensation ages. We didn't know if there'd be any dispensation ages, did we? Right. Or any law and prophets, and definitely didn't know nothing about fulfillment, did we? See how dead we was? Uh, but he's able to take that which is dead and make it alive. <clears throat> okay, got 214 now? Mm -hmm. Uh, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Nailing it to his cross. I think he has the 15th verse there, so might as well read. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing that over them in it. Yeah, he didn't do it in a corner. Uh, he came on the airplane and done that right on time, too. Mm -hmm. he, he came in the year 4,000 from Adam to show who the true son was. You understand? Adam mm -hmm. was a fi figure. You understand? And, and uh, But Yahshua was the one that gives eternal life. See, the, the woman wasn't saved by Adam's death or transgression. Uh, it took Yahshua the Messiah to save uh of the souls of mankind. And the, and the only reason he can be the savior is because he's the creator. So he's responsible. And you just don't have no, well, it's just beautiful. So, uh, mm -hmm. so um, I guess you can keep reading back there in the transcript there. So you see where he said it. Uh, you believe, uh, what must I do to be saved? Believe on Yash Messiah, just like I told you. Believe that yeah. you are circumcised by his circumcision believe in his uh through his baptism believe in his death burial and resurrection believe believe in it believe that he's the redeemer believe that yahweh gave him to restore and to redeem the world back 
Mm -hmm. And it ain't enough devils in hell to keep you from being saved. Anybody. Mm -hmm. And really, we know there's only one devil, but there's plenty. Yeah, there's plenty. There's an innumerable company of demons lying to you. As many demons as was cast out, that's how many doctrines there are. That's a lot of doctrine, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Have mercy. But there's only one true one. <laughs> only one true teaching, and you're part of it when you come down to this school. And it's a blessing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, okay. keep reading. I guess we can keep reading that. Okay, and you don't have to jump up and join none of these cricket organizations. See, you're talking about joining. Well, what's the matter with a new birth? How'd you get in your family? Did you just join it or were you born in it? That's what's going to have to happen to you. You're going to have to be born into the kingdom. You're going to have to go in there by the spirit and you can't jump nor wet nobody into it. And the man that's standing and preaching to you, you can't, that you can't damn. Doesn't it say that? Damn. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's what's going to happen, happen to you. You're going to have to be born into the kingdom. You're going to have to go in there by the spirit. And you can't damp nor wet nobody into it. And the man that's standing and preaching to you that kind of doctrine, he's sound asleep. He don't know nothing about it. So you see how he's saying you got to be born to go into the kingdom? See, you can't join this. You know, say, okay, I'm going to go down there and join that class. You understand? He said, no, you got to be born into the kingdom. And isn't that what Yahshua Messiah said? Yeah. See, that's why there's a natural birth. So you can understand something about a spiritual birth. And the physical birth was by blood, water, spirit. So what do you think the spiritual one's going to be through? Uh, hmm. The blood that Yahshua Messiah shed, the water of uh, living water, washing of regeneration, believe in him, but through the scriptures. And it's by receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the spiritual blood, water, spirit. And that'll change you. That'll convert your soul, won't it? Yes, it will. And so that's what he said in, uh, was it, John about three, two and three. It says, except you be born again, you cannot uh, see the kingdom of Yahweh. So that's why people don't see the kingdom because they ain't born. See, and then and then in the uh, fifth verse, except except you be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom. Now you, so you see how, and it, see, we was all born of the water. You was in the water bag. You understand your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but now uh, it's be born of the Holy Spirit. See, in other words, be born again, right? <laughs> you ain't thinking the same way. And then he's so, he, so the theme he's going over again is about baptism. They're dunking somebody down in water. And he said, well, you ain't getting into the kingdom that way. <laughs> you understand? You got to go mm -hmm. in through the spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah. And they, and they don't even know the Holy Spirit is Yahshua the Messiah, do you? Were you taught that before? No, sir. That the, the you know, that the, that the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. I'd say it's pretty important. Uh, the Holy Spirit will be sent in his name, his name, mm -hmm. Joshua. He shall teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. you. Did you ever have anybody, did you ever have anybody teach you all things before you come down to this school? No. No, they, all they did was read the Bible to you. So he's over there showing that when you baptize, that's burying it. That's a burial. But he's going to show that it's really uh, grafting in on the tree because he did pour out the Holy Spirit. He says, when you plant a seed and the tree comes up after seven years, then it'll bring forth some fruit and then you can graft into it. And he said, that's what happened with the Gentiles. They was grafted in. That's what he's going to read about here. Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. Please. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now you got the branches. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. He's talking about breaking them Jews off that didn't believe. All right. Now you see where the Jews broke off at? Say, look, boy, it's the branches. 
You heard me, you're not blind. Branches, every branch. He didn't say root, every branch that bear, that bear is not fruit, said he took it away. Said his father was the husband man. He said his father took it away. You say Yahweh is spirit. He's cut off by the spirit. He doesn't receive the Holy Spirit. All right, read. Thou will say then. Thou will say then. The branches were broken off. The Gentiles. Thou will say then. The branches were. The branches were broken off. Not the roots, but the branches. All right. I'm sorry, I lost my place. But I might be grafted in. But I might be grafted in. Hey, look, not planted, but grafted. Yes, we do know what we're talking about, too. All right, read. Well, because. Well, one of them long drawn out. Well, what are we breaking off for? Because of unbelief. Because he didn't believe. They were broken off. They, see, that's why they was broken off. All right. Now you keep your eyes open. I told it, I told you it was late for him to get in by water baptism. That's the Jew. To say anything about the Gentiles getting in by water baptism. All right, read. And thou standest by faith. And listen, you stand by faith, not by the works of the law. All right, read. Be not high-minded. Don't be high-minded. But fear. Wait a minute, Doc. Ain't that man sitting over there in the Vatican high-minded, carnal-minded? all puffed up and all swollen up and saying, no man goeth to the father, but by me. And the treasurer of indulgence, don't be high-minded like that. He's a Gentile. Now, where do you find at in your book where the Jews is broken off and the Gentiles were supposed to take over? See now, I would give you a deep one. Ain't nobody going to be saved but the Jews. Nobody. No, indeed. Somebody said, well, that leaves me out. I ain't no Jew. Now, that makes me read some more. Second chapter of Romans and the last two verses. And you'll find out whether you are or not. And see, the terrible thing about it is he didn't even know what a Jew is. See, it's bad. All right, read. For he is not a Jew. For he is not a Jew. Which is one outwardly. Which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision. Neither is that circumcision. Which is outward in the flesh. Which is outward in the, listen brother, listen, neither is that. You see, he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And neither is circumcision outward in the flesh. And neither is baptism. How'd I do? And you ain't eating no feast of the Passover and nothing like that outward in the flesh. See, the difference between this dispensation and the other. All right. All right. Read on. But he is a Jew. Now, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, which is one inwardly, and circumcision, and circumcision, is that of the heart, is that of the heart, in the spirit, the spirit, and not in the letter, and not in the letter. I am a Jew, Dr. Williams, that's a fact. Didn't I tell you nobody but the Jews going to be saved? I'm a Jew, and I mean a genuine one, too, for real, and I'm not ashamed of it. I am an Israelite indeed. If Yahshua the Messiah, one, 
with, oh, excuse me, if Yahshua the Messiah is one, me too. Now, did you find out what a Jew is? Now, the devil, he's got you walking around here all tightened up. Oh, boy, isn't it, isn't it a dog? What his tradition and customs and ignorance and, in other words, Yahweh did just exactly what he said he was going to do. He said, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to note the understanding of the prudence. Listen, folk, when he runs through that grave and come out there, they ain't seen nothing of him since. They haven't got no trail of him since. And they down there playing with these natural, all, excuse me. They haven't got no trail of him since. And they don't, and they down there playing with the natural all the time. And we, and wait, excuse me, I need, Lucy, you need to read. <laughs> um, hmm. They haven't okay. got no trail on him since. And they they haven't there, got no trail of him since. And they down mm -hmm. there playing with the natural all the time. And we way over here in the spirit now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I tell you, that's the difference between one dispensation and the other. Mm -hmm. Everything back under this dispensation or under the law was natural. And it all was a schoolmaster to bring you up to the spirit. Now, it's the law. Listen, listen. We get this messed up, too. Oh, there are so many things. Now, listen. When we're talking about the law, a lot of times, folks don't understand what you're talking about. Now, this is the law. Now, listen. Get these words straight. This is the law contained in the ordinances. Now, where do you find that spelled out in the book? You'll find it in the second chapter of Ephesians, meaning the law of commandments. Second chapter of Ephesians, contained in the ordinances. Now, Abraham, Noah, and on back to Adam, they didn't have this law. But this is the law contained in the ordinances. Now, this, this is an ordinance here. This is an ordinance here, a baptism. There are ordinances here, all these sacrifices, and they're operating in the sanctuary. Those are ordinances, foot washings and all those things. Those are ordinances contained in, in the law. But now look, here's the difference. But the law of the spirit, that's what brought the universe into existence. It's been in operation all the time, and it will forever be. There's no end. Ooh, what was that? Sorry. Yahweh, or God, is law. But what we're talking about, when we say the law was fulfilled, we're talking about the carnal ordinances. Now, everything there was back here, just like this ark. It was just physical as this sanctuary. And when you're telling him, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, and we call that the law, and it carries you all the way back. But if you want to discriminate and segregate between the difference, this is the law of Moses or the law contained in the ordinances. Now then, we got the universal spirit law, and we got the law contained in the ordinances. Now there's one more law, and that's the civil law that's legislated by the politicians and whatnot and the people. Now there's three laws I've talked about. Now I showed you what the difference was. All right, read on, but now watch. But now watch. For, now. for if Yahweh spared not the natural branches. Now, if Yahweh spared not these Jews that wouldn't believe that he was the Messiah and accept those ordinances or the principles of the doctrine of Christ, like we told you. All right, read on. Take he, lest he also spare not thee. Take heed, be careful, lest he spare not thee. He's talking to the Jews there too. All right, read. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Yahweh. Now look, he told him. Now listen, 
look up here. Now said, now you look at the goodness and then you look at the severity. See how good it was for them that obeyed and accepted. And you look at the penalty and the severity or the destruction of them that wouldn't. All right. On them that on them that fell. Severity. Severity. But toward thee. But toward thee. Goodness. Goodness. The Gentiles. Listen. Reader. If, oh. <laughs> if, thou if thou continue in the faith. Now that's predicated on this. If you continue in his goodness. There's always somebody that wants to try and do something for him. But uh, see, but you can't continue on in it. They come down here every Sunday and testify and all through the week for maybe a couple of months or something or another. Say, why don't you come on down here? Really, like you should. Say, oh, I know what it's all about because I, aren't you interested in others? All right, read on. Otherwise, you also shall be cut off. Now, repeat the same thing over again, Doc. But toward the goodness. But toward the Gentile goodness. If thou continue in his goodness. If they continue in his goodness. Otherwise. Otherwise. Thou also shall be cut off. Otherwise, now you remember they were grafted in. Is that what you just read up there? That's right. That's right. And look, I told you now he wasn't planted, but he's grafted in. Grafted in among the branches, not the roots. The trees bearing fruit. How long? Seven years. And the Gentile, he was grafted in, not baptized. That's where Peter made his mistake. Now, look, you got to either make one or the other wrong. You ought to say, well, God ought to wait till Peter got him baptized before he gave him the spirit. On the count of this here, where John baptized him before they got the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. That's what you ought to do. You ought to make God wrong and Pete right, or else make Pete mistaken about it and God right, but he grafted them in after they were grown up, skipped and missed the circumcision and the baptism and the suppers, broke off the branches, broke them off here and grafted the Gentile right in where the Jew was broken off. Now we're going to see about, we're going to see how this boy is gone back in too, that now behold the goodness and severity to them that fell severity and to them that uh uh toward the toward the goodness toward the goodness toward the goodness all right read and they also if they abide not still Now listen, and they also, the Jews, and they also, if they abide not still. In unbelief. In unbelief. Shall be grafted in. Nah, Doc. Uh-uh. No, sir. No, sir. We're going to baptize them, whether or not. Now, anybody can be just as stupid as you please. And you could see that. And if he abide not still in unbelief, though he rejected John's baptism, see, it's too late now. And he was broken off among the branches too. And the Gentiles grafted in right where he was broken off at. And now don't boast, don't be high-minded, because if you do, he'll break you off too. And mm -hmm. then the Jew that was broken off out of the branches, if they don't continue in disbelief or unbelief, God will plant them. Now, grab out. I just want to know whether you're catching me, Doc. 
See, he'll graft them back in. See, he broke them off from the branches. He's got to graft them back in by the branches. Therefore, leaving the doctrine of baptism, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation from dead works. It's just as dead as it can be. Can you see that? Now, what we've done down here, we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. I ate many enough crackers and drink enough grape juice. See, I used to baptize the folks in my church and had charge of it. And now here you are trying to tell me something about it. I baptized women and men, you know, take them down in the pool. Some of them was particular and they didn't want to go in behind the church. They wanted to go down and get baptized in running water. I took them down to Mad River. <laughs> and this is what I would say. Get up, boy. Doc is demonstrating with one of the students. I was a specialist in two. I'd get me a thing and everything with a towel all thrown over my shoulders. And I'm standing down there. And this is what I'd say. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go ye in all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And lo, I'm with you always. Now you trying to tell me about that as though I couldn't read. And here I done baptized a lot of folks myself. And this is what I would say in obedience to the command. In obedience to the command now. He didn't say nothing about baptizing nobody in the water. He said, baptize them in the name. Uh, could you bring that down a little bit, Marie? Thank you. And as, uh, and I said, as Reverend taught me to say, in obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I baptize this, our beloved brother, Luther Daniel. Oh boy, I'm getting proper, ain't I? In the name of the Father, I wanted you to know what his name was. That's God. And in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Ghost. And right there is where I didn't know who that was. Pollution. I baptize him and bring him back up. Next. <laughs> Now you around here trying to tell me something about it. See, but now we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Now Paul taught circumcision or uncircumcision. It didn't mean a thing. And he took and grabbed Timothy and circumcised him so that he'd have some part with the Jews. He went and grabbed one and punched somebody in the water too. Just do anything, see, that we might save some. Now, if nothing else won't do for you, we'll do it for you. That's right. I'll just do it for you if you just got to be baptized. Some of these brethren here, they, some of you will wet them up, won't you? <laughs> yes, indeed. And if they won't wet you up, see me. <laughs> In other words, we got to be satisfied. Now, I won't do that. But I'm not going to teach you it's essential for salvation. I'm going to teach you it's a dead work. It ain't no good. It ain't no good for you. Never was and never will be. And it ain't nothing in, even in the almanac, as far as the commandment of God. It ain't nothing from Genesis to Revelation that ever said anything at any time about a Gentile being baptized. God ain't never said nothing like that. How'd I do, Bishop? You're a theologian. Right. That's not I'd easy. Like to, uh, I'd like to read um, 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, some of that. I don't know exactly where it is. What are you looking for? Um, where he says, I am all things to all people. Uh, start at 20, I think. First Corinthians 9, 9 and 20. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, 
as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Yeah, to keep them. On. Yeah, keep on. Them, on a while. I'm sorry. Yeah, we just keep saying, just keep going uh, down for a little bit. Okay. Uh, to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to Yahweh, but under the law to the Messiah, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all see, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. See, that's that's what I that's what he's talking about. He even baptized Timothy or whatever, just to you know, even though he didn't knew it didn't mean anything. I am a Jew to those as a Jew to the Jews, and I, I just thought that went along with what he was saying. May I say something, please? Okay. Also to that about baptism, because I had just put down that pamphlet, uh, can water wash away your sin? And over there, Matthews 28, 18, may that also be read about baptism? Because it's not a physical baptism that he's saying here, and he's always preaching about this baptism. And when I just put that pamphlet down at the end, what kind of in the... Um, Mm, I'm sorry, maybe the second page of it. It talked about go ye therefore baptizing them in the name and not in water. Will we have that read, please? Thank you. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That that's is the name of that pamphlet is Can Water Wash Away Sin? Composed mm -hmm. and compiled by Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, the founder and Robert Harris, uh, Vice President and Dean and Carl F. Gross, just in case they wanted the reference. I can put it in the uh, chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I like the way this 29 says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. It doesn't say while baptizing them in water. It's the teach is what the baptizing them in the name of the father is. It's just yes, that's, that's a good one. Yes. Thank you. Can we continue in the transcript? Yes, thank you so much. Bishop Short, right. That's where we were. Yeah, right. And I did you want me to read Lucy? Or you yeah, got you can. Yeah, I'd appreciate it. That's not even in the almanac. You heard me. I said, God ain't said nothing. I ain't talking about what Peter said. Now it's 10 minutes till 10. Now we're down in, in the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Do you remember? Wherefore, seeing we have this ministry. See, I haven't forgotten the thought. We have done what? As Read we have second. received mercy. As we have received mercy. We faint not. We don't faint. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. But have renounced the hidden things. Now this is some preacher ignorance. He don't know what he's talking about. He think he's, he's commenced to putting his finger in his ears and all that hooping hollering. I'm declaring that Jesus said that. He said baptize him in water. The Lord gave this commandment as often as ye eat. 
and he ain't seen not seen, excuse me. And he ain't see, that's like throwing water on a duck's back. He ain't, he ain't said a thing to me. He ain't got me worked up. See, I know the difference. Did I say something wrong? No. He ain't, he ain't got me worked up. See, I know the difference. If I be your Lord and master and wash your feet, you also ought to wash. I know all about it. He ain't stirred me up at all. He ain't, he ain't even touched me. He ain't confused me. Haven't gotten me scared or fr frightened or anything. But I tell you one thing, we'll let them all preach too. But I tell you one thing, when he gets through with it, he's got to take some seat setbacks. See, he's got to take some setbacks. I'll stone him to death. I've done it. I don't know how many times and put him right back up there. Ain't afraid of nobody. Just put him right back. Make him get up here. That was one of them setbacks. I've done it so many times. Is that right, folks? Right. Whip your brains out. See, I just happen to know what I'm talking about. See, we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. I'm not going to stand around and tell you to get baptized in these churches and it's salvation. And you go and, oh, standing around trembling and shaking delusions and all kind of junk eat some crackers and drink some grape juice. And it just makes me shiver and fall into fits. Oh, that's a lie. We've done away with that. That's the hidden things of dishonesty. Read on. Not walking in craftiness. See, we're not walking in craftiness. We just tell you what was under the dispensations and then the other. Ain't nothing cunning and crafty about that. All right, read on nor handling the word of Yahweh. Nor are we handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully. We're not trying to deceive and fool nobody about it. All right, read. But by manifestation of the truth. But by manifestation and declaration of the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Elohim. In the sight of Yahweh or in the sight of God. Reader, I mean, God. <laughs> <laughs> but if our gospel be hid. Now, but wait a minute. Now, you got some questions to ask. You don't understand. You don't see what I'm talking about. But if our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. It is hid from them. That's what your state is. You're lost. Hid from them that are lost. All right, read. In whom the spirit of this age. In whom the God of this world. Has blinded the minds of them. Blinded the minds. You see, you've been taught this junk so long until it done, it done blinded your minds. Don't know the difference between one dispensation and the other. Just blinded your minds. Got you running around talking about, I'm at this, I'm at that, and I'm at the other. I belong to this, and I belong to that, and I belong to this, I belong to that. For I, good gracious alive, if our gospel, which is the power of Yahweh, now, let me tell you this, folks. Let me tell you this. Now, you listen at me. Now, I'm 37 years old in this thing. And if I don't blow the trumpet, as Yahweh spoke to Isaiah, said, blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain, saith Yahweh. For the year of my redeem is come. Yahweh speaks through me like he did around there at the mountain. Don't you tell me that you can't sit there on your seat all hardened and everything. He'll get you out on the end of your seat. 
and tear your face all up with it. And that power and plant and all that kind of stuff all mixed and messed up on your face, just like it does anybody else. And you're not so hard that you can't be cracked. And you don't get away with stuff like that. That's the reason why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it because it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. Now, when Yahweh is given, now when Yahweh is giving me permission to speak cancer, everything is got to go. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It's got to go. And whenever he tells me to say about an earthquake or anything that Yahweh says to me, it just got to be that way. And don't you tell me the power of Yahweh won't shake you up. When Moses and them that come from the wilderness there, and, they, and when they gathered around the mountain there, and when Yahweh spoke from the mountain, oh, I tell you, and he introduced himself and said, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, that bought thee out of the house of bondage and the land of Egypt. Thou shalt not have no other Elohim or no other gods before me. Moses, that brought him up, stood there and shook, trembled in his boots too. Now here you are, all stout-hearted. He done dumped Pharaoh in the Red Sea. You understand what I'm talking about? You see, it's tough. It's tough. It's terrible. See, it's better for you to get settled down now. Denounce these hidden things. You done had all these different baptizing. You done had all these crackers and grape juice. You done tried everything anybody told you and recommended to you. And so now you haven't gotten nowhere. Now, why not just try the real genuine thing a while? Say, what do you mean by it? Just sit right down on your seat and learn what it's all about. Try to see and look. If you seek me with an open heart, if you seek with an open heart, you will have that experience in your heart and in your mind. And you too can and will be happy, be as happy, just as happy as a man can, walking around down here in the world among the thieves and the robbers, false prophets and false teachers, murderers and skeptics and atheists and agonistic infidels, liars, backbiters and hypocrites. But you just have that peace with you all the time living under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That man and that woman have peace. They have joy and they are righteousness in the Holy Spirit. But if you don't see through it, it's because we've been out there in Babylon and all confused about these things, trying to merit salvation. It says it's by grace. By grace, it's not a thing you do. It's by grace that you're saved through faith. And that's not of yourselves. It is the gift, free gift. You can't merit it. One more verse I want you to read in your Bible, Titus 3 and 5. For this cause left I three in Crete. Is that what you want? Nah. Not by works. Oh, three, five. Not by works of righteousness. Three, five, three, five. It's not by works of righteousness. Which we have done. See now, wait a minute. Now we're going around here abstaining from this and abstaining from that and abstaining from the other and doing this and doing the other. Uh-uh. It's not by works of righteousness, uh, which we have done. But according to his mercy. But it's according to his mercy. He saved us. 
according to his mercy, he saved us. How that happened? By the washing of regeneration. By the washing of regeneration. And renewing of the Holy Spirit. And renewing of the Holy Spirit. You see, it's not by works. It's not by works of righteousness, folks. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of Yahweh. Now look, is anybody in here that didn't understand as I went through it and I explained it, got any questions to ask about it? Now, 10 o'clock, we're supposed to be going home. It's about almost five minutes after. It's Friday. What's that? It's Friday. I know it's Friday, but you see, you close down your meeting and dismiss them. And if they want to go, is that the way y'all been trying, been having it? It's 10 o'clock. And then if you want to drink coffee and ask questions and whatnot, why then you can tonight. So now this part of the service is over. Now, if you have any interrogation or any questions to ask anybody, why then you can remain and these charts will remain up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Praise Joshua. That's right. Uh -huh. So you saw all the things that, uh, how he just runs so many different things. But uh, I think, uh, well, uh, if you weren't familiar, uh, he was doing uh, Romans the 11th chapter about the 17th verse that's when he talked about uh, uh, when that, uh, those trees uh, 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 it says if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree that's a gentile were mm -hmm. grafted in among them and and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree that means are grafted into the body of Yahshua Messiah He's the tree of life. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. In other words, you're not down at the root, which is planting by baptism. You were grafted in at the branches. So would you ever put baptism together with something like this, reading the Bible? No, that come by divine vision and revelation. And then 19, thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Those uh, some of them, uh, well, those Jews didn't believe Yahshua. You understand? They, matter of fact, crucified him. And that is something else, too. Uh, there's another transcript where he talked about that. You know, all the people that he healed and all that, and he cast out demons? Well, why didn't somebody stand up and say, no, that man healed me? You understand? No, you shouldn't crucify him. You understand? But them demons are so powerful, they come back in them people and had them you know, going along with the crowd. Uh, that will say then the branch were broken off that I might be grafted, grafted in. So see, that's how the Gentiles are grafted in. Uh, Jews didn't believe. It says, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. But since they didn't believe, Yahshua, they were broken off that thou standest by faith. That's how the Gentile comes in, by faith, by believing Yahshua the Messiah. Be in the true gospel. Be not high-minded, but fear. And he was talking about how the how high-minded that Pope is. <laughs> you understand? He's out there saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, Ain't nobody, ain't no uh, nothing in the Bible where the Gentiles take over now. It's the same <laughs> Holy Spirit being poured out there. And he says, For if Yahweh spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee that means you don't get exalted thinking you're so great you understand that's he'll, right he'll he'll cut you off see sure. and, and it says behold therefore the goodness and severity of yahweh on them which fail severity you know when you're cut off <laughs> that ain't good you can go to the lake of fire you understand but toward the goodness because he grafted in the gentiles if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. And you know, we, 
We've seen that. We saw people that used to preach the gospel and say they love the gospel and they believe Yahshua. And then they get high-minded and saying, oh, that's what we once believed. That's not really the way it is now. It's this way now. No, you done, you're going to be, you're cut off. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and they also, if they abide not in unbelief, see how important believing is? If they abide still not in unbelief, that means they was broken off. But if they now believe, they shall be grabbed back in. For mm -hmm. Yahweh is able to graft them in again. Yeah. See, uh, for if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted in contrary nature, nature into a good olive tree. See, you as a Gentile, he gave you life, but, but you wasn't in the body of Yahshua. But you can be grafted in by believing the true gospel of Yahshua mm -hmm. Messiah. How much more shall these, which be natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? See, and then it says, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. See, it's a big mystery, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And that fullness of the Gentiles, when he pours out the Holy Spirit, you know, to the Gentiles. And now it still continues on. It doesn't matter. Whoever wants to believe in, whether you're a so-called Jew, but you're going to have to come the same way through Yahshua mm -hmm. Messiah. And see, you can't be, and it says, so all Israel shall be saved. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, and then you saw where he said, uh, he went to Romans 2.28. Uh, you're not a Jew, which is one outwardly in the flesh or the circumcision of the flesh, but you're a Jew, which is one inwardly by the circumcision of the heart through the spirit. You understand? Mm -hmm. so that's what be, by receiving a Holy Spirit, that's what makes you a true believer. See, and, 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 and if you're, see the gospel of the kingdom, that's good news about the kingdom now how can you be in the kingdom and you're calling the king a liar saying he didn't fulfill see that's why you can't be eating grape juice and crackers and you're not in the kingdom if you're doing that <laughs> why because Romans 14 17 says the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking but it's righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit see so when you're doing them physical things you ain't in the kingdom you don't know the king see and that's how simple it is. He showed he's showing how that because we never thought about that dispensation of the law. And that was the fourth dispensation. And just like the sun appeared in Moses vision on the fourth day. What's the sun for to change? Well, don't you have seasons? It, yes. It's the earth tilted and how the earth revolves around the sun. That's what causes the seasons of the year. And so when the true son come, you know what he did? He changed the seasons. And from Adam, it was a death. And from that, from that uh, burial all the way down through, they were buried in carnal ordinances. Yahshua Messiah freed them from that, resurrected. He, he fulfilled them and nailed them to the cross, died, buried, resurrected. Now you have son up. He changed the season. Now we're in the age of grace by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See, so you can be a new creature in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so he was showing, he also went to Ephesians, the second chapter, where it talks about Gentiles. Uh, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. but mm -hmm. and, and they were given, Israel was given the law contained in ordinances and commandments, showing even the Ten Commandments he fulfilled. It. You understand? see and uh then he says and then when you read 218 it says for by one but spirit oh, we both have access unto the father see it's right. by the same holy spirit and the last mm -hmm. thing he ended up in was uh that uh romans i mean no titus three and five not by mm -hmm. works of righteousness we have done but by his mercy have he saved us with the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the holy spirit well what would be renewing of the holy spirit Adam lost it, and now since Joshua poured out the Holy Spirit, he's given it back into the souls of mankind. See, and I think you also had 2 Corinthians, 
fourth chapter, he talked about that renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty. It's dishonest for God to say he's he's uh, he's he's the representative of the Son of God on the earth plane. Why why do why do we need a representative when Yahshua Messiah is here to represent himself? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and then if you looked at that, it says, um, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world. Now, did you see where they was reading the holy name? And it says the spirit of this age. And Dr. Kinley didn't say that. See, no, they, he didn't. The spirit of this age is supposed to be the Holy Spirit. So when you change the God of this world to the spirit of this age, you missed that out too. You don't know hmm. what age you're in. It's now the age of the gift of the Holy Spirit now and not about them. Uh, so it's, it's the goddess world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. That's what his job is. He said, lest the light of this glorious gospel should shine under them. Just like Yahweh said, uh, well, I think it says, he, he said, let there be light. And that's what he does. When you hear this gospel, you can be enlightened in your heart and mind and have your soul to save throughout eternity. And there ain't nothing no better than that, is it? Nope. So that's a great transcript. He is running a lot of things, but we want to try to at least try to uh, let the continuity go. And there was some good things the brethren uh, brought out with it, just like the Paul the water baptizing some people, just trying to help them to see <laughs> so they might hear the truth when it's preached, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, great transcript. All praise go to Yahweh and to his son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 We sincerely thank and appreciate everyone for their participation today and thank everyone that came out to study with us. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England, and our brethren in Jamaica have a 7 p.m. class on Sunday evenings. May we all stand in our hearts and our minds for our doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power both before all time and now and ever. May we all say, hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.